All right, let's get it on. Here is the Trail Finder 2 that I've been building from RC Four Wheel Drive. And I was just gonna move right into the steering wheel modification that I wanted to do, but I figured at the same time as I was working, putting the motor in, uh, I, I thought to myself, I know there's a lot of new hobbyists to the uh, video series. And though we've had lots of RC adventurists see me do soldering and all of this before, that the new people still need to see this kind of thing, okay? So for all the folks that are out there that have seen me do this kind of thing, I apologize. I'll try to move swiftly through this so everybody gets a chance at, at being entertained today. Use your instructions, right? Make sure that you're doing it the right way or you're gonna find yourself uh, out of luck when you go to turn it on. So I've already gone through this. I already know which way and what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go ahead and A, since we did it already uh, in this build series, you know, I'm not gonna get into too much detail about this, but just gonna quickly dunk this into the flux. Not too much on there. My hot soldering iron, this is another key point of soldering, folks. If you don't have a hot iron, right, and I use this ironing uh, or this iron, uh, soldering station from Track Power, if you don't have uh, a hot iron, soldering will get very difficult. And I know I already covered this, so a lot of you folks are going repeat info, but the people that are seeing this a year or two or three after I posted it still may need this help. So let's move on. You'll see it's smoking nice and warm. I'm soldering at about 750 degrees. And you could hear that. It just went right into the end of the uh, um, wire there. So now as you look at it, You'll see that everything is looking nice and done. Got a little extra solder or flux on the end and just clean that up, you're ready to go. So now the purpose in doing that and getting that done the way it is, is so when I go to solder it to the actual ESC itself, I'm gonna have the ability with the solder that's on there because I already did the back of this as well. Um, I'm gonna be able to just simply melt it in place. The other thing that I've had to go ahead and do, which is a smart thing, is now that the motor is installed, I switched the wires around. So there, I'm actually gonna not use the uh, the box they have here right in the back for the electronics, okay? I'm actually gonna move forward and try to place everything up front on, on the plate here. Keep in mind that a kit like this, you still have to have a place for the battery, and my choice for that is basically right across the back in this area right here, okay? So I'm gonna to try to keep this back area clear in this particular build. Now I've got some solder on the end of this, and uh, remember when you're using heat shrink on ESCs, uh, usually if the motor wires are attached, you have to have the heat shrink on the uh, wire before you attach it to the ESC, or else you're gonna find that you're uh, sealed at both ends. There we go. Just want to make sure that both of these uh, both of these soldering points have plenty of solder, nice and strong. Make sure you don't burn your ESC with your soldering gun. I've done that a few times when I was uh, a little more less experienced. Nothing like doing such a nice wiring job and having your ESC look like you uh, put put the iron on it and you burnt it or melt it in a corner. That's a big bummer. Okay, perfect. So this is generally where I'm gonna want this uh, ESC anyway. Um, I could have it up here, right at the top corner, right? Because I want this to be able to be exposed but still to leave a really small footprint as I call it. So here I'll just kind of line this up so you can see it. That's that's the challenge of doing these types of tutorial videos is, is getting it lined up so you can see. Here I'm actually using some heat shrink on the back. I'm just gonna put the heat shrink over the connection I've already done and shrink down that stuff. If you've never seen this stuff before, it can either come with the, the battery connector that you purchased or you can use one of these. It's 127 piece, you know, it comes with different sizes and whatever on the inside. Keeps it from shorting out, being issues uh, uh, with your electrical. It kind of gives it a little bit extra strength, but you gotta make sure that you heat it up enough and it melts around the actual joint. Okay, so there we go, moving on. Just kind of line up the top here and I'll melt that on. Beautiful. Nice strong connection. Make sure everything's nice and warm. 
All right, now I know I'm probably going to get kicked from the manufacturer to show this from Tekken, but one of the mods that I actually do is I take the on-off switch, okay? This is actually where I have a lot of issues with uh, water sometimes when I'm trying to water resist stuff, is this switch gets a buildup of gunk in there or, or it starts to corrode. So instead what I do is I take it and I cut it right off, and I take that wire and I actually twist it together and solder it. So it's just a, 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 a you know a one unit. So it's always turned on. So as soon as I plug in this, the the uh, battery, I know that everything's going to be turned on, and I can listen for the chimes. With everything uh, all mounted up here, right? Like now my ESC is in place. The wires for the motor are done. Capacitor is in place, and I made sure that the the connector I was using uh, was the right polarity because I don't want to plug it into the battery and have it short out on me. That would be terrible. Uh, everything's ready to go and I'm just starting to have these plugs start sticking out for the receiver. Small footprint. Okay, it's exactly what this is. It's a very small area that I'm taking up. And because I don't want to use um, like a Tupperware container or stuff, instead, my friends, I know some of you are for and some of you are against this kind of thing. This has already been plastid it. Okay, this is the same receiver, very small. Plastic dip for those who haven't seen my waterproofing videos by now. Well, all you gotta do is search waterproofing RC. You'll find out what plastic dip is. There is the antenna. I just tied it into a short little knot for no other reason than it was uh, hanging up on the wall. And what I've done here, my friends, is I've put in a whole bunch of leads Right? This way, if I ever have an issue and I need to get into where it's been water resisted or waterproofed, I can still, like I know this one's my steering, I know this one's my bind, my throttle and auxiliary channel. Each one of these, if I break a servo, just pop it out and I'm good to go. So one of the things I've learned to use over the years is uh, like a split loom. Uh, is what it's officially called. Uh, this is just polyurethane. It's a, a wire protector, right? They use this in automobiles. So let's go ahead. I'm just gonna kinda get a general idea of the length that I'm gonna need, even though I'll probably have to trim this up a little bit. Okay, so I'll just cut off a little length. This stuff I got at my local auto store. You know, it only cost maybe two, three dollars, because it's just, literally wire sheathing, right? You can split it apart. So I'll just uh, kind of feed this on here. So off camera, I went ahead and finished cleaning up the wires. I wanted it to look real nice and sharp for you guys to show you what a tidy job you can do. Now, when I'm using zip ties like this, I make sure that when I cut the tops, I use a file and grind it down, right? Because you don't want to have uh, sharp bits sticking out that are going to scratch you later. I've had that happen many times. So I'm going to move forward now uh, with something I think is very cool, definitely worthwhile doing in this uh, build. And it's something I have not invented, okay? This is not something that I've thought of, but I've seen others do it and I've always wanted to do it myself. This is a steering wheel uh, off of another vehicle I have. The one that comes with the Trail Finder 2 actually is a yellow steering wheel, but I like this one just a little bit better. Now in the Top Gear episode, everything is tan uh, on the interior, but after the fire, everything is black. So what I'd like to do is have this hooked up. Here's the dash plate uh, for the Trail Finder 2. I've already painted it. I've scuffed it up to make it look like it's been in a fire. And uh, here's where the steering rod is going to be coming out. Okay, here I'll just kind of move this out of the way so you can see against the white background. So I want this to be able to turn with the front tires when they turn uh, right and left. Now, one of the things is for me, since I'm replicating the, uh, the Toyota Hilux that Top Gear had beat the crap out of, and it just kept going on to kill a Toyota. Uh, for me to do this properly, you guys, I don't want to have a, a left-handed driver. I want to have a right-handed driver, which will be very unique. This is a shout out to all my UK RC addicts that are out there. I want to make this as close as I can. So here we go. I'll move the cab out of the way. 
and I'll show you what I'm doing. And there we go, Traxxas 2080 uh, micro servo. I bought this at pmhobbycraft.ca. Uh, it's my local hobby store, and I think this was about 28 bucks. Uh, so not a bad deal. Uh, I decided to go with the Traxxas route because I didn't need a metal geared uh, mini servo that was gonna be like 50 bucks from high tech. I just simply didn't need it. So here we go. I've actually never done this before either. So it took me a lot of time and thinking about what I wanted to do. And since I'm gonna be fabricating a top for this anyway, what I'm gonna have to do is figure out a mount on the back like so. Right, I could cut it out, I could use my Dremel to cut it in there, which is probably what I'll do. And I also wanna measure the length of the steering wheel. Here, I'll just get it so you can see it better. There, okay, so I'm gonna to wanna to measure the length because I'm gonna be putting it, either I could use this whole thing right here or I could use a long screw. And <laughs> that's what she said, come on guys, I, gotta, I can't let that go. <laughs> I could use a, 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 a long screw uh, and actually just put it right through the steering wheel so it attaches into the servo. That way, when it's hooked into the Y harness, my friends, uh, of the receiver, it'll go, uh, it'll start to turn to the right and the steering wheel will turn to the right. Left, right. To the senior hobbyists, they know uh, they've actually seen this before. And like I said, I've never actually done this before. So I'm excited to see how this turns out because I know for film, it's going to make it awesome when I have a dude in there holding on to the steering wheel, you know, uh, with his arm going left and right. So I'm totally into that. So I guess I'm going to figure out the exact best way to go about mounting this in there. Okay, I'm going to have to do it off camera, obviously, because it's going to take a little bit of work. Well, screw it. Let's do it right now. Uh, move that out of the way. Dry fit it. See if you got it right. Now, before you guys go and go, oh, yeah, that looks terrible. It does, but it's going to suit my needs for now. And I'll show you exactly why. So this here, my friends, is called balsa wood. If you guys haven't seen it, it's very, very th uh, thin, uh, skinny, you could say. You almost make it disappear there. Uh, a lot of folks use this uh, in the hobbies for making airplanes and stuff. A lot of our dads and stuff that made RC airplanes did this kind of thing out of balsa wood. This, inside the, the Top Gear Hilux truck, uh, it was actually a tan interior before it got torched. What I'd like to do, my friends, is even though when you get balsa wood, you know, I just got this at, at my hobby store, if you break it, right, it's very shatterific, I would say. It looks very uh, broken, right, like a piece of wood. If you guys want scale accessories in the back of your truck and you want a couple of sheets of plywood, here's, here's a couple of neat things that look good, okay? That's just a side note. On this one, the way it's mounted in now, uh, once I had everything uh, around the servo, uh, put in place and I made sure everything was drilled out to where I wanted it What I did was I cut a piece of balsa even though if it snaps and looks like that check this out sharp scissors Perfect perfect perfect. Okay gives you a general idea of maybe where I'm going right now on the top of this I'm able to place my dash plate against the balsa wood Okay, right up to the very edge take out a marker like this, just do a quick little stencil around what I'm doing. And I gotta tell you, my friends, I am not even an amazing scale builder. Like I do some pretty cool stuff, but there's fabricators out there, you guys, that are just insane. And if you go onto Google and search like uh, scale RC trucks or websites, you'll find some pretty cool stuff out there, right? So there you go. So I'm going to look at the back here. I'm going to just kind of dry fit it to where I wanted it to be. Not too bad, not too bad. And I'm going to get uh, some glue and glue it down. Just a, a lock washer on the other side. Get that threaded through. Boom, 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 boom. That's pretty easy all the way. You can see the steering wheel is turning. So this is a great sign. And am I going to put it in there tight? Yeah, I guess I might as well. Not, not too tight. I don't want to crack anything. Now the steering wheel is basically in place. I could, I could uh, paint that if I wanted to. I think the way it is is just fine though. Put that on the end of the driver. 
and thread it. Oop, my bad. I can even just do this by hand now. It's like a giant wheel. There we go. Just try to thread it into that servo. <laughs> okay, so the wire's out of the way. Everything's been installed. Bump a ball. We have a dashboard. Okay, <laughs> steering wheel's on the right hand side or on the right side, uh, both right hand and right. I'll just go ahead and black up the balsa, kind of like a wood burning torch. There we go, beauty. Perfect. Beautiful. Loving it. Just like in the video. There we go. Okay. So now I've got my blackened dash. I've got my working on fire dashboard still. I've got my working uh, steering wheel on the inside. Someone call the fire department. Don't worry, I've got a... Uh, even if it had gotten away or something stupid, I got a fire extinguisher right here. Always prepared in the RC Spark Studio. And beauty, 5.5 volts. So I already paired the uh, transmitter and receiver together. So they only communicate to each other with little interference. Put in uh, these Velcro straps for the battery. Like so, everybody does their Velcro strap straps differently. So I'll put that in. Now we'll put it in this way. It's a big two cell 6,500 uh, milliamp hour uh, battery that I use. It gives me a ton of running time. So the battery, the uh, receiver antenna, everything is good. I'm excited. This is uh, gonna be very cool if it works. One of the things I noticed was with this big battery, if I wanted to, to use that, I had to cut out a section of the uh, cab, right? So it would fit in there properly. And I also noticed that if I was gonna fit this on the back, here's the sandbox as I call it, uh, I also had to cut in this area as well so it would fit in there, but it certainly does. Don't worry about these posts, you guys. Uh, these will be taken care of. I'll show you what I'm doing with the body anyway. Uh, so now that that's in place, kind of looks like a big, uh, <laughs> like a big huge gas tank there, which is kind of cool. Uh, let's hook this up and see if the steering works. May as well. I hooked up or the, the front assembly here is done already. I'll do the transmission after and Okay, I guess it's just time to plug it in after I plug in the servo. So we'll take the second lead off of the jumper Y cable. Make sure polarities are lined up. I already cut the J tab off of this one servo because it wouldn't fit in the lead otherwise. And plug it in. This will be it. The big test. And right here. No, it's starting. Good, FXR, I haven't set this up yet. I haven't calibrated it or anything yet. So I'm a little worried about jumping on the throttle. I wanna make sure it goes the right way. Get these leads out of the way. Let's see, the big, the big test. Let's just get this here, watch all this hype and it fails. <laughs> here we go, you guys got a good view of everything? Uh, right there, I guess, hey? Left and right. Oh, what the hell's that? Hold on, there's gotta be something up. Uh, uh-huh, testing, hold on, checking. Hey, there you go, now you know I'm a man of my word. Let's see here. Yeah, okay, oh, she's hopping a bit. Looks like maybe I'm getting a little interference off of this here, hold on. That's better, I think, is it better? No, still getting a tad of interference. I wonder if it's the battery. Hold on a second. I love it when things go wrong on camera. Long story short, had nothing to do with interference. It had to do with that I had to calibrate uh, the ESC right off the hot. Yay, it moves. Uh, I haven't set up the transmission, so I'm not gonna dolly around with this too much right now. Make sure it goes in reverse. It does, and I'll have to change the uh, um, reverse setting on the ESC. So not bad, it's obviously in low gear right now. Everything's set up, does the steering work? Yeah, there we go, okay. Time to do it again. 
make sure it's not this servo that was hurting everything. I don't think so. So I'll get it all in the way. And make sure the polarity's lined up. And like so. I didn't hear a twitch from the servo. Well, that might not be a good thing. Everything fits in like last time. Drum roll, please, if you guys can see. There we go, right there. Hey, all right. Check that steering wheel out. So now, when I'm filming, it's going to give me the opportunity to have a little guy in there holding on to the steering wheel. And it'll actually look like he's steering. Hey, what do you think of that? Looks pretty neat, hey? So right on. I'm glad uh, you got a chance to see this, at least. There's the truck. It's still not ready to go. I still have lots that I have to do to it. Um, yeah, but she moves. So there we go, folks. The steering wheel mod, uh, everything you can see there. Uh, I got plenty to go on the truck, so don't worry. We're not out of tutorials yet, even though some of you are dying for me to have this on the trail already. Uh, I'm not quite ready to do that yet because it's a piece of art. Uh, but I do want to get these rims dirty. <laughs> uh, you guys, just like I said last time, if you want to post up a video response below, lots of people see my videos. Go ahead, try to get some extra views or subscribers off of the RC addicts that are coming through here. So post up as many as you want. And uh, really, uh, if you have a comment or if you like the video, please go ahead and uh, let me know below. And see you guys on the trails. Until next time.